Welcome to Wildcott Vintage. My name is Raven. I'm the owner of Rockbilly Raven Vintage on Etsy. Um, here on my channel, I bring to you all of my treasures that I find out in the wild uh, that are vintage, as well as tips and tricks so that you can find vintage out in the wild as well. This is hopefully part three, last one of a massive haul from a VOA, uh, which uh, VOA thrift store here in the Midwest. Um, I went the day before the half off sale and made out like a bandit. So um, in the first video and the second video I showed accessories um, and in this last video I'm going to do skirts and dresses and hopefully coats. But again, there's going to be a lot and I'm trying to keep the video short. So without further ado, let's talk about skirts. Alright friends, so in my particular store, I cater to the cosplay, uh, historic reenactment, theater, um, and various subgroups uh, and subcultures off of those areas. And I do so happily. So I love finding items that my friends who do Victoriana or who do uh, World War II reenactment, who do cosplay, who do um, theater, that they can use for their needs. And I love finding Victorian inspired skirts. So, and I also have, on a rare occasion, actually found vintage, antique Victorian skirts. So, um, this particular beautiful skirt has a tiny waist, but um, really great coloring. Absolutely huge walking skirt, a very high waist, a great piece to use for... Uh, Victorian cosplay things like that uh, this one is a prom skirt from probably the 90s um, it's made in Canada it is um, ooh, I'm gonna say it's a rayon or an acetate it is fully lined it's in great shape um, I can't find the um, fabric tag on it but has an acrylic zipper down the back that's completely inset and hidden, which is very helpful for my friends who are doing reenactment of some sort. Um, it's a great way to affordably uh, get started and just hide some of the modern uh, findings. Um, in that same vein of Victorian style skirts, this beauty is so sneaky. So my friends, you can see this tiny waisted skirt was cut and altered at some point. It has an acrylic zipper hidden in the back, but it is actually an Edwardian skirt from, I'm going to guess, a morning dress that someone cut the bodice off. If you see, the top has been modified. The stitching on here is from an earlier sewing machine and what's so great about it, it's going to be hard for me to show you, is it still has space in the back for a bustle. It's absolutely beautiful. It is a heavier weight walking skirt. Fantastic for doing reenactment if you are into goth subculture. Guilty! Total goth girl. Um, and I couldn't believe when I found this beautiful skirt for 99 cents. 99 cents. I've got to go through it with a fine tooth comb and check all of the older, especially those older cotton stitches. Um, but absolutely unbelievable skirt. Can't wait to get it in the store. So my last skirt is actually... I just realized because I am refilming this due to a computer problem when I first started my YouTube channel, there were four skirts, but it already put one up in the store and it sold. Ah, it was a blue uh, Victorian style skirt from the 80s that was very much like this one. I just remembered that. All right, anyway, so 
talking about skirts, look at this. I know I'm killing the light, but I want you to see the detail in the pockets. Look at this fantastic skirt. This is a small but very cool 1970s A-line skirt. Very high-waisted, uh, very, very interesting tag. The tag on it says Tattoo of California. Tattoo of California. I'm originally from California. Anyway, uh, really great uh, velvet. Um, it's 100% cotton velvet. It says it's a size 7-8. No, it's not. It may be a vintage 7-8, but this is a much smaller. This is small to an extra small um, skirt in our modern sizing. Great detail on the pockets. Nice longer length. No damage, no issues. When you're looking at vintage skirts, you want to double check that the zipper in the back, if there is a zipper or any buttons, that they work, that they work all the way down and that they work all the way back up. You want to make sure that your buttons are well attached. If you can fix that sort of thing, fantastic, feel free. Um, but if you can't, don't buy it. Um, look for stains, look for rips. Look for anything that might, and it's long wear have happened. And if all of those things check out, then start checking your tags. Look for zippers. Metal zippers are a fantastic indicator that you have something vintage. Not an only indicator, but um, acrylic zippers are fine too. You can kind of tell as you get further into vintage, the age of pieces by their construction and the materials that they're constructed out of. So, all right, now on to dresses. These two dresses I'm about to show you as I lean out of frame. These two dresses are really important for people who are looking at vintage but might be confused by 70s does 30s or 90s does 20s or 80s does 50s. Those are all still vintage pieces, but the way they interpreted the style or the way that they interpreted the cut is very important to making the older, like the 70s does 20s, to make the 20s part more authentic. So first off, I have a black velvet, long velvet dress. What is interesting about this dress is that it is a bias cut dress. A bias cut dress is a dress that is cut on the fabric at a diagonal, so it stretches and it makes it slinky across your curves. Um, this particular one has metal rhinestone straps. It is a very 1990s does 1920s look. It's probably a prom dress from that time period. I'm going to give you a tag flash. Here's what you want to look for if you think you've got a 90s piece. It is important to be able to authenticate it. If you look here at this part of the tag, this part of the tag says that it is 100% rayon. It is made in the United States. Those two things let us know that this is an early 90s, does 20s piece. It is in immaculate condition. All of these findings are in very good shape. The inside has no stains. Always look at your armpits. Make sure there's no staining. And this is going to make a fantastic 20s style dress. Someone's going to love it to pieces. And it was $1.99 all day long. Great minimalistic prom dress, formal wear. Oh, just beautiful. Really, really great. So again, in that vein of this is another 90s does. This is a 90s does Victorian 90s does sort of 20s. But most importantly, it is goth girl heaven right here. Wednesday Adams, eat your heart out. 
This is a black velvet, long sleeve, high waist baby doll maxi, right? All of these terms are just a way to indicate that, you know, high waist means it's going to be, you can't see it, but high waist maxi means it goes past your mid calf. Here's what's fascinating about this. This particular dress is from Banana Republic. Banana Republic Vintage, can you believe it? But look at our tag. 100% rayon and silk. My apologies, 91% rayon, 9% silk. Quality materials. It's made in the United States. It is not made in China or any other Southeast Asian country. It is still made in the United States. It has good quality buttons on the sleeves. The whole back of this dress is a very Victorian Edwardian style button back dress. It has beautiful cut and beautiful lines. So even though it is not 60, 70 years old, it is more like 25 to 30 years old it will serve the purposes for doing cosplay for my friends and brothers and sisters who like to do gothic subculture. This is a fantastic find and it is legitimately vintage as well over 20 years old. Um, makes everybody's brain hurt, but it is true. So, all right, this video is going to be a little bit longer because I am going to push through and get the last two pieces in here. Now we're not talking about 80s or 90s does anything. Now we're talking authentically 1950s and 1960s. All right, friends, last two pieces in this haul. These two things are coats. All right, check it out. Look at this. Look at this fantastic trench coat. Okay, even better. This is a ladies trench coat. I almost passed this up, okay? So it was hanging there and I didn't look at it as closely as I should have. And I happened to flip the side and it went whew. And I was like, what was that? Was that a tag on the bottom third of the lapel? I mentioned this in a previous video. Good way to find vintage coats in particular. Look on the inside lapel and see if there is a tag down in the lower third. Look at that lining. Look how beautiful it is. Beautiful satin. Look at this tag. It's so much fun. You see it? Official dragnet coat. So I don't know if they're referring to dragnet the TV show or if they're referring to Dragnet as in Pulp Fiction Detectives. Um, this coat has a couple of indicators that it's older than the 50s. It might be from the 40s. Um, if it is referring to the TV show, then this coat is going to be more from the 60s. If it is uh, not referring to the TV show, then it is solidly from the 1940s. Um, has shoulder pads. Really awesome. Great lapel. Sorry for the wrinkles. Like I said, the lining is absolutely beautiful. Not overly interesting buttons, but nice, nice buttons. When you're looking at belted coats, like a trench coat, check and make sure that it has a belt. Which luckily, I did. I took my own advice. Has its original matching belt. There's no stains. There's no damage. There's nothing wrong with it. And it was... $3.99. I don't know if you can see it. Take my word for it. $3.99, friends. Absolutely amazing women's trench coat. Look. Look at these pockets. Can you see them? I don't know if you can see them. We've got great, like, angled lines. Really awesome. All right. And then my last piece. I'm going to say this, and I'm probably going to make it sound stupid, but piece de resistance. The best piece. Anybody who speaks French, if I butchered that, just forgive me. I'm from America. I don't speak any foreign languages. All right, friends. I found a black velvet 
opera coat from the 50s. Not even an opera coat, swing coat from the 50s. Look at these buttons. Look at them. Oh my gosh, they are so good. Even the buttons scream, I'm old and amazing and stylish and fabulous. Such awesome, awesome condition. And I keep giving it away a little bit because I keep trying to show you guys the inside of the swing coat. Here is our tag. Can you see it? It's really good. No, you can't see it because I'm moving around too much. There it is. Awesome tag. Again, bottom of the inside lapel. That's where you would find your vintage tags on coats, especially pre-1980s. Some in the 80s still have them there. It is not 100% foolproof, but look at the tag. You can tell when you have an older tag, especially if you watch my videos. So, black velvet, it's nice, right? Beautiful. And then there was lining. I'm just gonna keep this right here because it's really good lighting on my face. Look at this light lining. Lighting and lining. Oh, uh, it is a striped satin lining. It is absolutely, absolutely stunning. So when you would wear your coat and it would just kind of, oh, just a black velvet 1950s coat. That's nice. Oh, and then the lining. Oh, this piece is unbelievable. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not because I have a coat and a sweater problem. I don't really need any more, but I might sell another one so I can keep this one. Uh, this is a plus size. This is a large plus size 1950s coat. Check your armpits. Check your hems. Make sure that everything is nice and well made, well, well attached. Anything that you find, make sure you can fix it or clean it. And if you can't, pass it. Um, really awesome little pockets here in the front. Kind of a neat, almost late 40s bat sleeve going on. Really good. Um, it's got some neat little decorative pieces on the front that um, almost remind me of sort of Dolly-inspired 1930s, 1940s. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty solidly convinced it's from the 50s. Beautiful velvet. Um, great piece. And $4. Yes! So that's it, my friends. That was the haul of the century, if you will. Um, I don't know about haul of the century, but it was a great haul. Um, I really uh, appreciate that you have come and visited me today. I hope you enjoyed finding beautiful treasures with me out in the wild. If you like this sort of thing, give it a like, maybe consider subscribing. I am going to be uh, uploading hopefully at least once if not twice a week, if not more, because I really like this. And uh, I hope this video blesses you in some way. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down for me and leave them down for me. Leave them down in the comments for me. And uh, have a great rest of your day. I really, again, appreciate that you've spent some time with me. Take care. Bye.